How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice. We choose to rejoice. Amen? Remember, if you're miserable, don't let anybody know you're a Christian. Stay home in your closet till the Holy Spirit fills you and kills you. Praise God. Then you can come out a new man. Hey, how many of y'all know we're in a war? You know, let me share something with you. This is an endless war. It's an endless war until Jesus comes and possesses the earth. Amen? You and I were born into this. Generations before us were born into this endless war. And people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge and understanding about this war. The physical and the spiritual. Everything you see that happens in the physical has been influenced by the spiritual. Everything. It all starts there. Remember, war broke out in heaven in Revelation 12. Amen? That war is still continuing. It's a, the battle is against the kingdom of Christ and the Antichrist kingdom. Bottom line. That's what the battle is. Now, they have many labels prior to that. I mean, I mean, they got religions and all kinds of, they're camouflage. But behind it all is the Antichrist against Christ. And the, the, what they use in a battle and the strategies is deception. Amen? Um, um, one of the things in, in warfare, you do not want your enemy to know what your next move is. See, Satan knew this also prior to anything. That's why he lied in the garden. When he told Adam and Eve, man, if you cooperate with me, you're going to have sight like you've never seen before. He lied. Because when they did cooperate, the first thing that Satan's kingdom accomplished was to be hidden. Because Adam and Eve could see the angels. They talked to God face to face. The first thing that happened to them is they became blinded. We became scaled, what we call veiled. So you and I are born into this realm blinded, not knowing the truth of what the real war is. The only thing that you and I, I used to see was the physical, except for what we were told of some spiritual. But the scales really come off, the veils only come off, and they begin to come off with the beginning of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the anointing that begins to remove the veils. Does everybody understand? And so it's our responsibility to maintain that presence and that position to constantly fully get the veils completely off. See, some people are half veiled. They can only see so much. I saw a woman walking down the street yesterday. I was driving, and she was covered all the way. She, you couldn't see her face at all. I thought, my gosh, what bondage under a false religion, thinking that they're doing something holy because they believe, the husband believes that nobody can see his wife's face except for him and his family. So every time she has to leave the house, she's got to have full veil. Unfortunately, most people are full veiled. That's why we have all this stuff. I mean, if everybody could understand the reality, hello, <laughs> That there's a fight in the unseen realm that needs to be won so it doesn't affect the physical realm. There'd be a lot different. Would you turn to Matthew 24? Endless war. And verse 3, please. Let's speak it, please. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. He didn't say the end of the earth. He just said the end of the age. Which just means end, end of the age of grace. Where God's plan is no longer associated with his body on earth. It's final judgment. And Jesus answered and said. 
Take heed that no one is what? Oh, hallelujah. Don't be deceived. Don't be blinded. Don't be misled. For many will come in my name saying, I am a Christian or I am the Christ. And will deceive many. But we see that all over. Media, everything. Even this fake president, we have an office here. In verse 6. And you will hear of wars. Are we hear of wars? And rumors of wars. Well, that's been going on for years. Nothing's stopped. See that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdoms against kingdom. Nations is also associated with ethnic group. Kingdoms are regions. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Well, we've seen loads of those already. He said, and these are the beginning of sorrows. We are in the beginning of sorrows and coming to the end of the beginning of sorrows. Tribulation is around the corner. He said, and they will deliver you up to tribulation, and they will kill you, and they will, you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. That's like right now, isn't it? People are being slaughtered all over the world that are Christian, beheaded. You, the news won't tell you any of that because they're antichrist. They're prophets of Baal. They're liars and deceivers. You got to get the news from people that are living there and tell you the truth. Thank God for technology for that. <laughs> Amen? And then many will be what? In verse 10, offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Man, you see that out there now. But he who re endures to the end will be what? Saved. And this gospel, the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Again, we have wars and rumors of wars beginning in the sorrows. You got tribulation and then great tribulation will come. The gospel must be released all over the earth for the end. W there are warfare strategies and the major thing, again, is that's involved is deception. You do not want your enemy to know what you're doing. Amen? Deception is Satan's greatest weapon, and his power is fear. What you can do, in other words, in this, that's why when you pray in tongues, let me share this with you. When you pray in tongues, God is imparting mysteries and directions into your spirit. You don't know it. And the devil don't know it because the devil knows what you think. He's a spirit. Don't let anybody tell you he can't read what you're thinking. If you ever think about it, where's the argument? Hello. That's where the argument is, isn't it? Now, don't get me wrong. There are members in your body that you, you memory. Amen. But the devil knows exactly what you're thinking and he can read your mind. He knows what you're thinking. I hear it all the time. Well, the devil doesn't know what I'm thinking. Really? Who told you that? That's where the battle is, isn't it? That's why it says cast down all thoughts and imaginations and emotional things that are come against the knowledge of God. So when you pray in tongues, it's the only language he cannot interpret. And neither can you unless there's an interpretation given by the Spirit. And what happens is when you're praying in tongues, this direction, strategies, mysteries is imparted in your spirit. And the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance when it's needed. All of a sudden something will come. Oh, I got a lightning bulb went up. Oh, I got revelation. Praise God. It's been in there for 15 years. You just thought you got it now. But that's how the Holy Spirit, remember there's no time in the Holy Spirit in the, in the eternal realm. But he knows that we're bound by time in this realm. And there's a time sequence that things have to be accomplished by. And God reveals his time sequences through his seven feasts of the Lord. But people don't know that. They just think becoming a Christian is good. They look to be prosperous and so forth and whatever. Never realizing that there is a warfare going on. And we've been rescued from that warfare in the physical so we can attack in the spiritual. So things can be changed in the physical. Amen? Hallelujah. So in this, the purpose of all of these things and these strategies is so that we can attack and take possession 
of land. We must take possession. The Bible tells us that we take it by force. Amen? We take it by force. You take possession. You must take possession in spiritual. In the spirit realm, that's land. There's areas. There's territorials. There's territorial spirits. There's principalities over these territories. They control. Do you ever notice that when you go into certain places, you know, people call it, oh, poverty. Well, why is it so poverty in this area? And everybody lives together there. It's drug infested. Why? Because the principality over it is controlling that. And until that principality is driven out and the Christ comes in and people begin to warfare in that area, it will never change. Only then can it change. Amen? But people are not looking at that enough. They're still looking to physically. They're still looking at things in the natural. Again, until these territories are taken, and again, without taking them spiritually, you can't take it physically. Amen? Go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6.10. I think we've heard this before. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? That's why the Bible says forsake not to assemble. Be reconnected, refreshed. Amen? Listen, it's, it's you know, nobody can do it on their own. There's no lone rangers out there. You can't do it on your own. People have tried and failed. <laughs> and verse 10, let's read it. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. You know, people still don't put on the whole armor of God. They don't know what to do. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That's our battle. When we con control and take those territories, we have victory in the physical realm. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Amen? To stand against it. Battle. As for believers, our warfare is spiritual before physical. You might want to punch somebody in the mouth, but why don't you cast the devil out first? Amen? There's times you want to slap the hell out of someone to make room for heaven. Right? But it just ain't going to happen. You got to get rid of the hell in them. The world's view is physical, not spiritual. We are all born into a realm of constant warfare. Endless warfare. People are destroyed for the lack of understanding of the two realm warfare. These are war games that's going on. They're war games. Amen? They're endless until Jesus physically comes and takes full possession of the earth. What he's doing right now through his body, now the body of Christ is here to restrain. Once the body, I really don't believe World War III is going to manifest until you and I are out of here. Because we're the restrainers. Amen? There's going to be roars and you know, rumors. Ah, it's starting now and all this stuff with Ukraine. We'll talk about that in a minute. Ah, this is going to start World War III. Listen, don't listen to the media, man. They're liars and deceivers. They're just out to put, promote the Antichrist realm and their lies and deceptions. They got, they, they're all for themselves. They've sold their souls out. They don't care. Does everybody get this? This is reality. This is truth. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Verse 1. 
endless war. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Are we the assembly of the saints? No, you may not feel like a saint, but, you know, you're a saint. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in their maker, and let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with a what? A dance. So there's nothing wrong with dance, and I prefer you not dance in your underwear like David danced. Amen? We're just going to dance in an in integrity way. Now remember, David danced in his underwear before the Ark of the Covenant. Amen? He didn't give a hoot what people thought. He danced before the presence of God, said, I don't care, man. I'm pleasing my dad. He had a relationship. Remember when David used to have struggles, he defied everything in the area of the priests, what they said. He said, forget you guys, man. I'm going to go sit in front of this ark and talk to my father. And the priest didn't do nothing about it. And either did God. Anybody else touched that ark, they died. But David didn't. Oh, glory. Let them pray, sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. You got fingers and you got a hand. Yes. You know what? When you clap, you know what you're doing? Shooing demonic activity. They can't stand when you clap. The, the demons, they hate it. They, they, they begin to back off. Just start singing and praising. Yeah, glory to the Lamb, hallelujah. When you feel frustrated and you know attacks are coming, just start praising God because they can't stand it. Shoo. That's what you do. Shoo. Shoo. Hallelujah. It says, verse 4, the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their bed. Well, thank God we're out of bed. Now you can sing louder. Amen? Let the, verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand. For what? Battle. Battle. To fight. To what? Execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the what? The written judgment of God. This honor have all the saints praise the Lord. This is the honor that God has given me and you. See, judgment from God will come through, in the physical realm, will come through his soldiers, his body, his believers. What you're seeing right now is judgment in these wars and rumors of wars. Many of this is the judgment of God to dismantle, to destroy antichrist regimes. In fact, there are thousands and thousands of people praying that all over the world. Calling destructive fire down in these areas from heaven to destroy these places. God is answering the prayer. You and I are seeing judgment of God. Now, the Bible says judgment begins in the house of God. Amen. So that means you can't go out and start calling and, and battling and warfare unless you're cleaned up. Because you'll get your butt kicked. Hallelujah. All execution judgment on the wicked. This honor are his followers. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Oh, happy days. Second Thess 2. And we'll start at verse 1, please. Hallelujah. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you. You see that word comes out multiple times. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is worshipped, 
so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. Now, that is not going to happen until mid-trib. So, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Who's he talking about? Us. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but has pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, check that out. I mean, that's phenomenal. So we know that this delusion and deception will be stronger and stronger and stronger. Amen? But when the strain of the body of Christ is removed, there's going to be a great delusion. People are going to be, they're going to be willing to do whatever. They'll take the mark. Although many people have taken part of the mark already by being vaccinated. That's already part of the marker. There are people dying left and right because of the lie of deception and this false flag and all these plagues and pestilence. Now we know that there's real ones. Amen? But we know that there's lies and deception and exaggeration in many. Heck, your immune system can about take over anything. Hallelujah. So we see strong delusion from God as a judgment for rejecting his love of truth. You know how many people don't want to know the truth? They don't. I've talked to many people, even my own family members, and tried to tell them what's going on. They don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I tell them whether you're here or not, you're going to be accountable. You're going to stand before God. And he's going to either say, enter in my good and faithful servant, or see ya. That's a terrible place to be. Matthew 13. Verse 24. 13, 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among them, among the wheat, and went his way. And when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to then to go and gather them up? And he said, no. That's why you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. That's why things are taking so long. You know, we all want it done now. We want all the exposure done now. And I do too, believe me. I want to see all the corruption get put into prison and they can get saved there. Get out of the way. Let's have the kingdom of God established, whatever. But Jesus is saying, look it, right now there'll be too many people dead and not make it. So God is trying to awaken as many people as possible before he really unloads. Amen? So that that harvest is continuing. See, out of chaos comes harvest. It always happens. So we are in a chaos time, but also the, one of the beginning of the greatest harvest of history. In verse 30, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But the wheat into my barn. Wow. Go to verse 41. Then the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. Now it says, out of his what? His kingdom. Hello. 
out of his kingdom and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now go to 37 for a moment. And he answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the what? The wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. Hello. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so will be the end of this age. Very powerful. Again, we are at harvest time right now. It's happening. There is a separation going on. Matthew 25, 31. Speaking, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations, all nations will be gathered together before him. Is it, are they, you know, the, the, this is a physical area, but is, are, are all nations gathered together before him spiritually? Even right now, yes. They're all before him. He doesn't see, there isn't anything he doesn't see. Amen. And he will separate them from one from the other. As one sh shepherd divides his sheep from the goat. Goat is representation of rebellion. Sheep are followers. Verse 33. And he will set the sheep on the what? Right side. Look at There's no coincidence he says right. Hello? The right. But the goat's on the what? Left. So if you're a lefty, I don't mean left-handed. God says you're a goat. If you're right, you're a sheep. Then the king will say to those on the right, come blessed of my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, we don't remember all this stuff. Lord, who did, when do we do this and feed you? And he said, when, you di when, when did you see you, you stranger take me in and whatever? And they said, look it, if you did it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And then he's going to say to the wicked, oh, snap. Are you ready? <laughs> he's going to say to the wicked in verse 40, then he will also say to those on the what? Left. So if you're a Democrat, you're in trouble. You're a Democrat. If you're a libertarian, if you're on the fence, the devil owns the fence. Again, this is no coincidence why the word says this left and right. He said, depart from me, you cursed. Why? Because they're anti-Christ. Into the everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer and say to him, Lord, when did we do that not see you or give you food and whatever? And he will answer them and say, Surely I say to him, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Left, right, common sense. Many people are leaving the left into the right because they know how corrupt it is. Listen, that deception didn't just start. It's been going on for a long, long time. In James chapter 4, endless war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want the truth, don't we? <clears throat> James 4, verse 1. Where do what? Wars and fights come from among you. Oh, man, we know this verse. <laughs> do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? So here, now think about this. 
remember the, de the word says, if a house divided cannot stand. So the enemy wants to influence the wars in your members. Because if he can influence the war in you and take possession in that war, then he can use you to influence others in a war. Amen? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And when you do ask, you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulterers do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. But he gives more grace, which is God's plan of escape. Therefore, he says, God resists the pride and the proudful, the arrogant. But he gives grace, the plan of escape, to those who are humble. Therefore, submit to God. Submit to his plan, and you'll be able to resist the devil. Amen? If you don't resist to his, submit to his plan, you cannot resist the devil, and he will cause more war in your members, and he will use you to cause division and war in others. He says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep, and let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will what? He'll lift you up. Again, war begins by influence of the unseen spirits that promote war within you. They promote death. They offer power, fame, and wealth to their followers, never telling them, that they're going to end up in eternal torment. That's what awaits them. The spiritual influence right now is to manifest the physical realm. That's what it's about. It all begins in the spirit realm, the unseen. 2 Timothy 2. So we want to constantly... Not allow the enemy to use us or influence us. Amen? So he says something very powerful in verse 20. He says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for what? Dishonor. How many of y'all want to be a vessel of honor? Amen. Not a dishonor. You want, you want to leave a legacy behind. Not a dishonorable legacy. You know, it, there's more than just being a good mom and dad. There's more than being just a good employee. Oh, they were good employees. You want to leave a legacy behind that says, that person was a man of God or a woman of God. That's what should be left behind as, as a recognition to that area. That person always gave glory to Jesus. Amen? Therefore, if anyone cleanses him, verse 20, himself from the latter... He'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So your associations must be, you know, they must be people with a pure heart. Associations bring impartations. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare, the snare, the captivity of the devil, having been captive, taken captive by him to do his will. To do his will. What's his will? His will is to bring division. Amen. His will is to tear down the kingdom of Christ. His will is to turn believers against believers. His will is to turn mankind against mankind. His will is for mankind to kill each other. His will is promoting deception and lies. That's his will. It is important to get cleansed from the world's influence and recognize the endless war that we are living in, and to utilize the weapons from the eternal realm. There are, the enemy, one of the things the enemy loves to do is put limitations on us. Those limitations are broke by more, uh, broken by the pres getting in the presence of God and assembly. 
You may not know that they're building, but when you get in God's presence, they begin to come off again. Limitations that have been beginning to build. We're to be taking territory, amen? Territory for Christ. That's what this is about. In 1 John chapter 3. It's an endless war. Why? Because they don't battle. They don't fight. We are called to battle. Our purpose is to infiltrate, uh, destroy Satan's kingdom. Amen. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many people as possible. That's what we live for. First John chapter 3 and verse 7. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it together, please. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. You know, Jesus is always saying it. Don't get deceived. Don't get deceived. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the what? Devil. In other words, if you're sinning, the devil's using you. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Again, Jesus came to disarm the influence of the unseen evil forces of darkness by bringing the eternal power, truth, and presence of God and weapons, which is called the anointing of God. Amen? What? So he can turn, get his people to turn away from the world's influence and its lust and battle to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Listen, he paid the price for deaths, for Adam's mistakes. Amen? He paid the price for that. He paid the price for the curse. He paid the price for everything. Through shed blood, we are reconciled to his plan of grace, which is the strategies and the warfare plan that he's given us. You and I have access to everything of the kingdom of Christ, but many people don't get it. They don't access it because they become complacent and lazy. They become too worldly, and then they become too compromising in the area where they're caught up in their own lives. They're not able to deny themselves in a fullness or make a full exchange. And John chapter 8. In verse 43. I'll start at verse 42. John 8 verse 42. Hallelujah. Jesus said to him, if God were your father, you'd love me. You know, what does the word say? If you love me, you what? Obey me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come from myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth... You do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who, is, he who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. See, so when you try and explain certain things to people, if they're not willing to listen, it's because they're not of God. They, can, they, they may proclaim that they're a Christian. But remember, the word believe means to follow. I, I speak to many people that say they're Christians. They don't believe the word of God. I tell them, you're not a Christian then. It's impossible. Devil's children promotes lies, murders, and deception. That's what we see through the world. They hold seats and positions of authority. Some of our military leaders, presidents, so forth. Go to Ezekiel 38. Everybody there? Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, in verse 1, Son of man, set your face against Gog and the land of Magog. Now, 
Magog is associated with Russia. Gog is associated with Ukraine. The prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tabal, and prophesy, and prophesy against them. And say, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tabal. That word Tabal is also associated with Kabal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army horses and horsemen, and splendidly clothed, all splendidly clothed, a great arm company with bucklers and, and shields all around them handling the swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them, and all of them with shields and helmet, Gomer and its troops, the house of tomorrow from the far north and its troops, and many people are with you. Prepare yourself, be ready, you and all your companies, that are gathered about you, <clears throat> and be uh, a guard for them. For many days, and you will be visited. In the latter days, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which got, had long been desolate. They were brought uh, out of the nations, and now all of them dwell in safety. Now listen, in, in this, and I'm not going to go into the whole thing, it's about what's happening right now. Again, Ukraine is in the land of Magog. Amen? It is the second largest country in Europe after Russia. It was once controlled by Russia. In fact, all the people in Ukraine are Russians. They are Russians. They speak Russian. Ukraine is a playground for globalists. This is where people don't understand what's happening. The cabal... The Antichrist, their deep state, the satanic worship, child abuse, money laundering, and human sacrifice. With many, many uh, inner battles between and wars within. These states, many of these states that are in there are backed by Nazism. That's one of their largest regimes that are there. Putin announced before he went in there. Now, there's a reason why Putin. People don't understand that Putin's a white hat. He's not a black hat. Remember, God is bringing judgment all over the world. Amen? Does God want to rescue his children? Does he want to rescue the children that are being abused? How about those that are being sacrificed? Amen? When you begin to understand about Ukraine and who's in control there and what's going on, you'll understand why they're being invaded right now. But the, the media will tell you, it's always Russia, Russia, Russia. Come on, it's been Russia, Russia, Russia ever since Trump's been trying to run for office. Oh, Russia did this, oh, Russia did that. We need to rush in and get rid of this president. Hallelujah. So when Putin, before he even went in there, he, he because in Ukraine, it, there, there's... They're set up in certain areas. I want to just call three major areas because they're the largest parts in, it, in these two states. And so you have the Ukrainians that are, 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 are under a president, and then you have separate, well, they're not really separate states. They're all in Ukraine, but they've been claiming their independence as a republic for a while. But no one's recognized it. Before Putin went in, he says, I'm going to recognize your independence as a separate state. In other words, I'm separating you from them. Because I'm not going after you. I'm going after the central part of Ukraine and its president and all the corruption in the deep state. Does everybody understand this? Do you know that Putin's a Christian? Believe it or not. He is a Christian. You know, he's come out of a lot of places. Look at where Trump came out of. Hello. Look at where we came out of. <laughs> Hello. I'm not saying he's a perfect guy, but I'm sharing with you right now that there's something that's going on that God is using him to invade Ukraine. This is God's judgment. When Putin announced the recognition of the two, two large states of, uh, as being a, a, a republic, the place broke out with dancing, drinking, and partying, even the militaries. But they won't show you that. Only the people that are there will send videos to show you what's going on. Listen, the people of Ukraine hate their president. Does anybody understand? 
He was a he was a movie actor. I don't know if you know that. The president of Ukraine was a movie actor. In fact, he played in one of the greatest movies ever as the president of Ukraine. Within a short period of time, he got elected as president. Because of a what? A movie. <laughs> yes, it's one of the greatest hits. <laughs> Ukraine and Iran are together. Uh, I'm going to skip around a little bit, and I'm going to come back to some things. I don't know if you remember when Obama sent $150 billion to Iran. Think about that. He sent $150 cash. That money was sent to Iran, laundered into Ukraine, and sent to the Vatican banks to be distributed to the Antichrist deep state regimes. The Vatican banks. We'll talk more about that. Why? To promote their global plan. There are 14 biochemical labs in Ukraine, and pharmaceutical companies have free access to these places where they are allowed by the president to experiment on Ukraine citizens. There have been many diseases that are broken out. They've come up with vaccinations to do whatever. What do you think Putin's hitting? The bio labs. He's hitting all their storehouses and warehouses. He's not trying to kill people. He's trying to take out the deep cabal antichrist regimes. In 1992, when the Soviet Union was dismantling, there was an agreement between Russia, NATO, and the U.S. And the agreement was that NATO and the U.S. would not put any weapons in Ukraine. Well, they broke that covenant. That's when Russia made Ukraine their own country. Okay, they let them go. Today, Russia is invading Ukraine to dismantle the globalists from <clears throat> torturing his Russian people. <clears throat> Those are his people, he looks at. And all the corruption and the, and the corporations that are, uh, uh, and, and operations of money laundering and bio labs. The breakaway republics that were dancing in the street and celebrating because they were acknowledged by Putin, now are allowed to escape into Russia. They're accepting them and taking care of them until this calamity goes over. Amen? Again, <laughs> when Obama uh, released that money, it was the deep state money. I mean, it was the U.S. American money that was given to Iran, which came through Ukraine, and then into the Vatican banks and distributed. Listen, think about this. Do you remember? Everybody remembers 9/11, right? Days before 9/11, I don't know how long it was. Cheney, a member of Bush administration, mentioned that they just happened to lose two trillion dollars. How do you lose two trillion bucks? And then the the uh, the towers came down. Another distraction. They always create, create chaos when they're trying to, to avoid their, ca uh, their, their catching. Amen? Two trillion dollars of U.S. money, taxpayer money, was lost. Funneled through Ukraine into the Vatican banks. Ukraine is a hub of corruption. It's the Antichrist regimes. It harbors their people in corporate positions to transfer wealth, information, and protect them. Ukrainian en Energy Corporation board members. Hunter Biden. Hmm. Joe Biden's son. Joey himself was involved with this. Nancy Pelosi's son. Romney's son. John Kerry's son. In fact, John Kerry's daughter married a um, U Ukrainian nationalist. This reaches, their tentacles reach all the way to Obama, Clinton, Bush, Soros, Bush's staff, uh, Bolton, who was a U.S. ambassador. They steal U.S. taxpayer money and launder it into the Ukraine. You can buy there, look, you go there, you can, there's prostitutes all over the place. You can buy children there. There isn't anything that is ungodly that you can't get there. 
The media lies. Let me tell you, I, there was something that was brought up that was hilarious. So you got CNN, right? And they're showing this dude getting killed in Ukraine. And then they, then of course, the, the people that were doing the research, they showed the same dude <laughs> getting killed in Iraq. <laughs> You know, it was the same people, man. And then how stupid they are to use the same name in the same picture. I mean, but people are stupid because they're under the veil. Amen? Again, the media lies. CNN shows the same thing. Putin is a whitehead. We are seeing the judgment of God against nations. Judgment is in the house of God right now. Amen? He wants his people to learn and not be deceived. To learn and what? Not be deceived. I'm going to go to close at 2 Timothy chapter 1, or chapter 2. Endless war. Does everybody understand? Look, and I'm not calling Putin an angel, you know? But God can use anybody. In fact, he's going to use Satan in the end time, isn't he? So don't believe the stupid media. And people are so caught up. I'm so tired to hear about Russia, Russia, Russia. Nobody's going to escape God's judgment. They're all going to get snagged. They can't outrun the hand of God. And we are seeing judgment now because he is going to bring the greatest harvest ever. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it, please. You therefore, my sons and daughters, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must first take, partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer troubles and evil doer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, we also will, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words or to no profit, to ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Phileas are this, of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed of revelation and impartation be protected so that the enemy does not steal it. But bring to remembrance that we may know all things and prepare that we may be warriors victorious in the name of Jesus in this endless warfare in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>